Hi, I'm Dr. Angela Dara, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about several topics. One thing I would really like to explain to you is the difference between naturopathic medicine and our standard medicine that we're familiar with in our culture. What caught my eye on this was the German death rate of the COVID virus is actually incredibly low. Turns out it's only about 0.5%. And what this reminds me of is the naturopathic death rate of the Spanish flu was also quite negligible. So it made me ask the question, well, what's really the difference here? It turns out, I'm pretty sure it's how we respond to infectious disease. You see, in our naturopathic model, which is German medicine, we honor the body's immune response. One of the most important factors is that we never, ever, ever suppress a fever. We let the body have a strong fever response and we celebrate that as a massive victory. So far, of the clients that I've seen in hospitals, every time they get a fever, it's immediately suppressed with common medications you're probably familiar with. But in our heart of hearts, we disapprove of this because it suppresses the function of the entire immune system. That's also probably why the most vulnerable people to this nasty virus are those who are currently immunosuppressed. If you've lost a loved one due to this tragic episode, I feel for you. I know I might offend a few people, but I'm really hoping I bless many, many more than might happen to be a little peeved at going countercultural here. So, what are our fundamental belief systems to enhance the integrity of the immune system? Well, the first thing we do is we want a person to fast. The feed of fever, starve a cold, is wrong. <laughs> we want to starve both the fever and the cold. So we want the person to drink a lot of water, occasionally some juices, but try and steer away from solid foods. We use hydrotherapy, which we learned from an injured horse. Somebody observed a horse dipping there injured hoof into a pond of cold water methodically in order to alleviate their symptoms. Somebody watched this happen and took that lesson from nature and so we rotate between warm and cool and warm and cool for the purpose of establishing healthy blood flow. There are a variety of ways to do hydrotherapy and how we need to apply this application changes on the patient's presentation. I would be happy to help you figure out which is best for you, but I really can't just assume we're all the same and spell it all out right now. Another thing that we do is we make sure, no matter what the temperature is, that there is oxygen and fresh air available to that person. Whether it's cold outside or not, a window at the very least needs to be cracked. Another factor is sunshine. This might sound familiar, but it's really underrated as how powerful this is. We know scientifically that sunshine activates vitamin D, but I'm pretty sure it does more than that. We just haven't figured it out yet under a microscope or a chemistry lab. I can tell you that when I'm exposed to sunshine, I can feel stronger as long as I don't stay out too long or get a burn. Um, then I can tell that it's enhancing my integrity. Another aspect is um, a good attitude. <laughs> it turns out that our fear response will mess up our immune response and that's a whole nother topic that I'd love to cover with you. So look forward to that video as well. Please search for it. We must have an inner peaceful disposition in order to have a healthy immune response. Sometimes we feel how other people around us feel. And sometimes we watch a little bit too much news <laughs> or maybe a Facebook article or an opinion gets out there and our pulse elevates and we can tell we're shaky. That's an adrenaline response and it is robbing you of your resources. The moment you notice it, the most simple thing you can do is take a very deep breath in and a long, long breath out. Deep breath in long breath out will actually slow down your heart rate because the body's smart 
as you're breathing in, it wants to get as much oxygen as possible, so your heart rate will speed up. And as you're breathing out, the heart rate slows down. So if your breathing in is shorter than your breathing out, you are helping your body calm down. Another important thing to do is to read good books from good authors that make you feel peaceful, energetic, um, maybe even inspired in your heart. These things are really, really important because how we function from our emotional center can either enhance how much energy and vitality we have, or it can deplete you significantly. One of the topics I became very familiar with has to do with the way that magnetics and energy flows. I may have touched on this in some other episodes, but what I'd like to talk about a little more is called, well, it's at least related to the physics pattern called the torus. Our Earth has a magnetic pole. Right? We have a North Pole and a South Pole. Have you ever wondered what that means? That means that the electrons, the energy, the electricity of the Earth actually goes from the South Pole up through the iron core and then the energy comes down and out around the side of the Earth. As the Earth spins, it passes this energy out. A multitude of practices like martial arts, uh, some yoga practices, the list goes on and on and on. They have learned how to cultivate and how to generate this energetic flow. George Goodhart, the founder of Applied Kinesiology, which is one of our specialties here in the office, another episode for sure on that one, <laughs> he found that the pelvis actually generates electrons. Healthy gait will help you make more energy. If the pelvis is out of balance, the way your body generates electricity is compromised. He said that the pelvis generates energy and the spine dissipates it. What I've observed from many, many practices that I've interviewed, so to say, is that they have this pelvis activity and then a spinal extension, and then it goes out through the limbs. This is a very, very empowering process for the body. There's a lot we can talk about on how to move your body in order to generate these things, but again, I'm gonna table that because what I wanna talk about is how to use your emotional center to create vitality in your life and in your world around you. I've deduced through my process of a very serious concussion where I felt everything electromagnetic. I could feel sound and light. There's so many things that I learned through this process. What I realized is that if you are looking at the world around you and you're trying to figure out your place in the world around you based on what you see and what you hear, it's actually a destructive process for your inner self. You might have to play with this a little bit in order to fully understand what I'm saying. But the opposite is true, where if you're functioning from your core truth and speaking it to the world around you, you will enhance your own vitality. Many of us have gone through a season where we have had some very serious trials and tribulations, and I know most of the world is going through that right now. What happens is we change our priorities, our energy shifts, and our focus shifts. If we can find out how to honor those new priorities and make them happen in our life, you will actually feel vitalized by challenges. If you know God is good, if you know you are loved, if you know you have a purpose and a plan and a vision, you're already on the right track. If those things aren't settled in your heart, I highly encourage you to figure that out. You might need a mentor, you might read a book, you might just need a little bit of space in nature, but please cultivate your inner truth 
and speak it to the world around you.